This is today's Green Minute, and I'm Jim Parks. If this technology works out, it'll be so cool. In 1931, Thomas Edison said to Henry Ford and Harvey Firestone, I'd put my money on the sun. What a source of power. I sure hope we don't have to wait for oil and coal to run out before we tackle that. V3 Solar claims their spin cell will deliver electricity from the sun at two-thirds the price you're paying now. 82 years later, the wait is over. Developed by V3 Solar, dynamic spin improves performance and lowers costs so that solar can finally compete with fossil fuels on price. See, solar panels, when they face the sun directly, are most efficient. The further from a perpendicular angle to the sun, the less efficient the panel is. But if panels are formed into a cone, they get direct sunlight during the sun's entire arc through the sky. Spin cell solves the heat problem. It cools itself by spinning. As distributed solar becomes part of our lives, I think these would be kind of cute. They're coming out with a solar panel that looks like a Christmas tree with a bunch of little solar cones on it and they all rotate. Because a solar panel has to be heat resistant. That's why they're so expensive. But if you rotate them, one side's always cooling. So it's cheaper. You get these Christmas tree cones of solar power. Which will generate 20 times as much energy as regular solar panels. And they're going to put them in these beautiful little trees to make them aesthetically pleasing. And this message is brought to you by David Avocado Wolf, tireless in its quest to promote pseudoscientific bullshit and scams. Yeah, there's a problem with this 20 times more efficient than regular solar panels. And that's that current solar cells run at about 20% efficiency. That is, of the energy from the light that falls on them, about 20% of that gets turned into electricity. So 20 times more efficient would be 400% efficient. And what makes my engines truly remarkable is the afterburner, which delivers 200% fuel efficiency. Well, that's especially impossible. And these, these solar panels aren't just efficient, they're magical. Not only turning 100% of the light that falls onto them into electricity, they're magically getting another 300% of efficiency from somewhere. Now that's amazing. I mean, being able to create energy from nothing. And this perpetual motion machine she made today is a joke. It just keeps going faster and faster. Hallelujah, folks. It's a miracle. Lisa, get in here. <laughs> In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. So why spin these things? And why put them in a cone? Well, first of all, let's deal with the cone thing, because that's just really stupid. Because no matter where the sun is, at least half of your solar cells will not be directly in the sunlight and will essentially be generating no power. So here, let me fix that for you. Not 20 times as efficient but half as efficient as a regular solar panel. Now, for convenience, we're gonna compare this to a tracking solar panel. Yeah, I know it doesn't look like a tracker, but trust me, it is. And in both cases, we're gonna put the same area of solar panels on both. So to make the math easier, we're gonna take a cone about one meter high and one meter in radius at the base. So it's about two meters across at the bottom. Now the surface area of just that outside bit of the cone is pi, which we're gonna say is three, just so the Bible can be right for once, times the radius at the base, times by the length of the side of the cone, which in this case is about root two or about 1.5. So that's easy. The surface area of this cone is about four and a half meters squared. So our regular solar panel, we're just gonna say is gonna be one meter high again, which means it's gonna be about 4.5 meters wide. Now to make our comparison simpler here, we're just gonna assume that these solar panels are 100% efficient in turning the light that falls on them into energy. So how much energy will these conical solar panels generate relative to a flat solar panel? Well, maybe the simplest way to look at this is from the sun's perspective. Basically, how much is exposed to the sunlight? What its cross-section in the sunlight is, is the maximum flux. That's the maximum energy that can be turned into electricity. So it really doesn't matter how you cut it, putting the solar panels on a cone like this will reduce their solar cross-section by about two thirds. 
or looked at another way, let's just say the sun's over here. A solar panel on the front there is going to be generating, let's say, 100% power. And obviously, this is going to drop off to zero once you get to the edge. And then it's going to be zero for the entire backside of the cone, which will be in darkness and will be generating no power. So far from making these things more efficient, let alone 20 times more efficient, the simple act of putting these things on a cone has thrown away about two thirds of their potential energy generating capacity. So is there any potential upside to this? Well, they quite rightly say that solar panels become less efficient when they get hot. Now, that's true enough. Solar panels can lose about 20 odd percent of their energy generating potential once they get up to about 60 degrees Celsius. That's so hot that you couldn't touch it without burning yourself. Which is why solar panels, when they're on the roof, are typically kept off the roof such that you can circulate air around them, keeping them more or less nearer at the air temperature, which on the hottest days is, you know, maybe 100 Fahrenheit or 40 odd Celsius, even though these solar panels will inevitably be somewhat hotter than the air temperature. So yeah, solar panels, because they get hot, have a modest drop in efficiency. Okay. So let's just say that you're going to get a modest boost in efficiency from spinning the solar panels. Let's give them a 20% boost in efficiency for that. And in this case, I'm just going to be super generous and add that onto their efficiency. That means at best, you're up to about a 50 odd percent relative efficiency compared to a flat tracking solar panel. And that's where the benefit ends, because they want to put these big glass lenses over the top of their solar panels. Yes, they were so frantic to keep their solar cells cool that they put them in a greenhouse. Please, God, tell me this doesn't have almost 6 million hits on Facebook. Naturally, we could rely on Hollywood's finest to think this one through for us. They're coming out with a solar panel that looks like a Christmas tree with a bunch of little solar cones on it and they all rotate because a solar panel has to be heat resistant. That's why they're so expensive. But if you rotate them, one side's always cooling. So it's cheaper. You get these Christmas tree cones of solar power. Yeah, that's great. You can cool solar panels by keeping them in the shade. But let me just let you in a little secret here. You know what else solar panels don't do when they're in the shade? They don't generate any power. Yeah, this is almost as brilliant an idea for keeping solar panels cool as putting them in the shade. On top of that, the whole lensing thing is a complete joke. I mean, let's be generous and say that all the light falling on this lens actually gets onto the solar panel. As you can see, this is not exactly a monstrous increase in the cross section, but it does have a huge fabrication cost for that glass cone, which is maybe why they settled for a computer generated one instead. However, when you take a closer look at the people doing this, you get a distinctly different vibe. Like they're trying to use magnifying glasses to focus light onto the solar panel to get them to generate more energy, which of course is trivial enough to do. And sure, in that case, they would get a lot hotter and they would need cooling. Problem is, to get 20 times the light onto something, you would need a lens with 20 times the cross section. Yeah, that's the approximate size of the lens they would need to generate 20 times more power. And that's just assuming that you can get an optical lens that would do it. And then a lens that size, I may add, would put the world's largest refracting telescope, the one meter lens of the Yerkes Observatory, to utter shame. Then, of course, you have the problem. If for any reason whatsoever, the motor that drives this should fail for any reason, as will inevitably happen if you're looking at running hundreds or thousands of these things for the long term. There's no way to turn the sun off. So these things will cook like an ant in a magnifying glass in seconds. So that thing is, solar power in the right venue is actually pretty good. And spinning solar panels and putting them on a cone might look cool. And it might fool the odd celebrity or the odd guy on Facebook who puts it out for some now 7 million people to see. It's just a really dumb thing to do. Sadder thing is that the number of things I've got to bust has gone up like crazy. Now, people keep sending me this stuff. Plants that power USB, diamond batteries, 
salt water powered batteries, salt water powered cars, water that doubles the fuel efficiency of your engine, or just water that cures absolutely everything. Free power for the third world, another billionaire's idea, or, or Musk's Mars mission. Yeah, seems like the amount of bullshit science out there has got 10 times the media footprint of real science. And for that, I would like to thank all of those who support this channel through Patreon in helping to somewhat redress this balance.